So many men, or some men, are very fortunate to have you know, a decent amount of total testosterone, but their SHBG is stubbornly high. And for these men, uh, they end up having very low free testosterone. But have you ever wondered, how can you get your, your SHBG down even lower? And why would you want to get it down uh, in order to have optimal free T? So we're gonna discuss this. Keep watching and subscribe to the channel. And we'll be back after this. Hello, so uh, it's, it's Sam and Mike here from Balance My Hormones. Um, so in this video, we're going to discuss how to lower SHBG. Now there's two, two situations here. There's how to lower T uh, SHBG if you're on TRT and how, because there's discussion in both of these sides and also how you might lower SHBG yeah. when not on TRT. But first of all, there is a bit of controversy in the TRT community about why would you even want to lower SHBG in the first place? Yeah, that's true. So I think the, the, I mean, there's an argument both ways. Yeah. It, I think in the UK particularly, doctors would try and lower SHBG if it's high to get more t free testosterone from the amount of testosterone that you're given, right? Because yeah. they can't keep going up and up and up. Well, well but also because I, I think there's a, there's a desire to try to preserve the pituitary axis mm -hmm. without having to put someone on full TRT yeah. all the time. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it, sometimes or many times, people end up having to go on full TRT, but at least they've tried this, the step therapy to yeah. get them there. But, okay. So what, what does that consist of normally? So in the UK and in some other countries that have in America, there is Proviron, um, Mesterolone, um, which is a DHT derivative medication. And it can be taken in low doses. It can lower SHBG. Um, in some men, it can be suppressive over certain dosages. So if you're not on TRT, um, it may lower your SHBG, but it might end up lowering your total testosterone as well. So you're chasing your tail in those yeah. scenarios where, yeah. you know, it's coming down, uh, the SHBG, mm -hmm. but the amount of free T isn't really going up that much mm. because the total is coming. But have yeah. we seen cases where that, that's not true? Yeah, there was actually a couple of guys I know actually who, who got treated by the doctors one guy took what 25 milligrams of proviron and for about a year he had really really good total testosterone um shbg dropped quite considerably free testosterone obviously went up because of that um and when i say really really good total he didn't get suppressed and so his estrogen was good so lh and fsh were were normal yeah and they, they weren't okay yeah so no suppression of lh and fsh total testosterone hovering around what it was before he started, SHBG lowered and testosterone, free testosterone increased. That did actually wear off and it started, it started basically SHBG climbed back up. Mm. Obviously, if you start going higher with Proviron, then it can obviously lower and suppress more. So he's actually ended up being on TRT, but he had a year before TRT and, and ultimately the main thing was his symptoms so my, my were improved. Oh, that's, you know? that's brilliant. Yeah, yeah. So my understanding that SHBG is usually going up because there's something going on with the liver, usually non-alcoholic uh, fatty liver disease, I think is one of the causes, but maybe not the only cause mm. of, of, uh, of elevation in SHBG. And so ideally, if you can fix the problem with <laughs> you know, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, the thought would be, well, maybe the SHBG would come mm. down. And I think we'll have another topic just about that in yeah. the future. But, um, and actually, pentoxifiline, according to some papers, can actually improve mm. non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. Yeah. But there's no um, assurance that it's going to fix mm. your SHBG level. Not that it's a problem in and of itself. It's just that, mm. you know, one would want to find the best way to bring down the SHBG so they wouldn't necessarily have to go on full TRT, you know, testosterone replacement. But... Mm. And that's for those guys who, are, who, are, who have a, um, an intact pituitary. What about those guys who are on TRT, but testosterone isn't enough to bring down the SHBG? Yeah, so I mean, I think in, in, most, in most cases, you don't need to try and bring down SHBG on TRT, right? That's it's something that is done for certain reasons, as I explained before. In the UK, for example, you can't just give more testosterone. So maybe in the US, in some cash play, sort of practices, they may just give more testosterone, right? To get more total testosterone, get over that higher SHBG, give you more free testosterone, estrogen, and actually get your symptom resolution. But in the UK, doctors are sort of, you know, 
scrutinized and monitored so they can't keep giving more testosterone so they may give proviron alongside trt but to lower it frequency of injection and the amount in each injection may play mm. a role mm. in in freeing up more free testosterone i.e lowering yeah. shbg yeah so whilst your main focus may not be to lower shbg on its mm. own mm. it's just a byproduct yeah of of you know, um, of your dosing regime. So for someone who has a higher SHBG, mm -hmm. what do you think the best treatment regime or treatment protocol would be? Well, often actually less frequent and more. Uh, so if, if you were compare it to like a daily or a twice weekly or every other day or something, changing from that to going to maybe the same total dose over the week, but five, six, seven days. And then that change in the sort of dynamic of the, of the injection can for some bring down SHBG in itself by increasing yeah. free testosterone. I've seen that. Um, which is, you know, and on the, the, on the flip side, if, if someone has a lower SHBG, that's often why, you know, going to that sort of daily dosing or, you know, cream. Creams or yeah, another yeah. day dosing or, yeah, yeah, or three something. times a week dosing. Yeah. You know, whatever fits. More frequent, basically, yeah. lower dose, right? Well, we can talk about that on a, on a, different a one. frequency yep. protocol, but... Um, so really, yeah. So, so, so summarizing what you said, what you asked was basically SHBG on TRT. Um, if it is going to be lowered, if that's the way where you have to go with it with a doctor, Proviron can do that or changing your dosing schedule. But that shouldn't be the area of focus. The SHBG. Mm -hmm. It's. it's um, I, I think it's something to identify. Mm -hmm. It's a way to for the doctor to fine tune your treatment based yeah. on where your SHBG is. Mm -hmm. But it's not the overriding goal yeah. or mission. The overriding mission is to you know fix the symptoms of the yeah. patient yeah, yeah. and and to optimize the testosterone levels mm -hmm. uh, and and by doing that it should normalize yeah. the shbg and when shbg is high i guess there may be some underlying causes yeah. like a uh, fatty liver disease or, or, or something else going on but having shbg you need shbg you know when things get really really low on the shbg some guys can struggle to you know to manage testosterone going in the body, right? They either excrete it fast or, or they, they feel a bit unstable. So there's still some unknowns about the benefits potentially of SHBG. I mean, SHBG just doesn't bind to testosterone, but there's also some you know, other binding proteins that also bind to thyroid. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, p perhaps I think we're finding some other studies showing SHBG may reach the cell or uh, but we're not Binds sure with how, testosterone yeah. and then together they have an interaction you know with the cell but it's uh, this is the thing though this is this is not it's not clear cut you can have some some people with lower shbgs that you wouldn't think would tolerate a, you know a five six seven day dosing protocol if you just looked at shbg but they feel great yeah. and vice versa you know you get guys who are on a more frequent protocol maybe they've got higher shbg but they feel great and this is where it's just not blood test numbers right you're, yeah. you're treating the symptoms so it might be you know it, through your journey of trt you might try dosing frequencies you might try things potentially like um a, a proviron or something or dosing changes to lower shbg but ultimately it's symptom resolution is the goal okay right? yeah i mean my symptoms are resolved. Yep. Yours are resolved. Yep. Yeah. You know, we've dialed into the right dose. So yep. uh, I think that's really helpful. And you know, even age can raise SHBG. Mm. It's kind of a natural part of aging, but the testosterone treatment tends to keep it in check. Okay. So thanks for listening. So that was a quick summary of uh, you know, do I need to lower SHBG and how do I do it? Um, if you like the videos, um, please click the uh, the subscribe button and ring the notification bell um, to get notified. Thanks for watching the videos. And um, if you've got any comments, you know, put them underneath. If you've got any questions or any preferred topics you'd like us to go over, um, happy to do that. So we really appreciate you guys watching. So thanks.